In the name of the Holy Trinity, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> Happy Easter. Happy Easter! I'm sure many of you are wondering what I'm talking about when Easter was two weeks ago. It's easy to forget that Easter is a season. Easter lasts until the day of Pentecost, the 50th day after Easter. Indeed, each Sunday is an Easter memorial, the Feast of the Resurrection. When I was a child, Sundays were celebrated with family, and lavish meals. My mother would spend almost the entire day fussing, cooking, and preparing for our Sunday feast. Easter Day is set as the first Sunday after the first full moon after the vernal equinox. Easter is always in spring, just when our natural surroundings are bursting with new life. The English monk and scholar Beatty noted that Christians were celebrating Easter during the pagan month of Yoster, a goddess of <coughs> crops and fertility. The word Easter is taken from the fertility feast word of Yoster. The word Lent is taken from a Middle English word meaning the lengthening of days. Celebrating Easter in springtime is perfectly appropriate. What better time to celebrate new life when, than when the daffodils, the crocuses, the tulips are pushing, pushing their way up from the soil and reaching towards the warmth of the sun, despite a freezing winter. Despite a freezing winter. With age, I grow more and more amazed by how quickly the flowers pop up and the trees bloom in springtime. My favorite spring pastime is the daily inspection of the plants in my garden for daily progress. It's perfect that creation started in a garden. It's perfect that Jesus was resurrected in a garden. Those of you who are my Facebook friends know that my wife Dana and I dedicate one day a week to ourselves. We call it date day. We almost spend the day, or almost always spend the day on some hike on our beautiful Blue Ridge. We feel blessed to live here among the mountains. These hikes invariably take me back to my childhood summers on eastern Long Island at my grandparents' cottage. It was there that I would ride my bike to Billy Connor's house. With his brother, Mike, we would pick up our friend Chad and, and go exploring. <coughs> We would wander for hours through the woods and the seaside reeds, just exploring. We never had a destination in mind. We just wandered, exploring our surroundings. During one of these adventures, I remember we came across a feral cat that was in the process of giving birth. I'll never forget it. With our eyes wide open, we stared at the miracle of birth before us. We were only eight years old. In awe, we were speechless. We just stared in amazement. Hiking with Dana takes me back to those days. Hiking makes me feel like a child again. It makes me feel free from this world. It makes me feel like I'm a child of God. When I was preparing for today's sermon, one phrase jumped out and grabbed me children of God. It's in today's epistle reading. John says, see what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. I love the phrase child of God. It reminds me of one of my clergy colleagues at Trinity Wall Street in New York where I served for 10 years. He's a large Jamaican man, larger than life with a smile as bright and wide as can be. He always addressed people with this expression of our origin. Bill of God, Jane of God, Beth of God. Whenever he called me Bob of God, it made me smile. It made me feel loved. And he showed his love through his daily ministry. 
He insisted on getting up in the middle of the night to accompany me to Sloan Kettering Hospital for my cancer surgery. I tried to talk him out of it, but he insisted anyway. It's something I'll never forget. There's a dark side to today's epistle. It is believed to have been written by an elder of the Johannine community. It addresses theological and pastoral concerns regarding the beliefs of certain dissenters of the community. We don't know whether these dissenters voluntarily withdrew or whether they were kicked out. John's letter was intended to instruct the community that the dissenters were wrong in their beliefs. It's a sermon. We don't know what they thought or did or what was the basis of their dissent. Some scholars suggest that the dissenters did not believe Jesus was the Christ. Members of the early church debated various theories about who Jesus was, what was his nature, what was the nature of his resurrection. Some said Jesus never died and that he was just pretending to die until he woke up from a trance. Others said Jesus never had a human body and that he was pure spirit, like a ghost. In today's gospel passage, the resurrected Jesus dispels this notion. He explains that he is more than a ghost. In fact, he has something to eat. He is a fully resurrected body with new life. Perhaps the dissenters in the Johannine community believed one of these early church heresies. In any event, John's epistle deals harshly with them. He calls the dissenters antichrists or children of the devil. It's very much an us and them mentality, not very inclusive, pretty rough stuff if you ask me. But over the years, the church has evolved in its theology and its teaching. It has become more tolerant and inclusive of various viewpoints. <coughs> it has become more creative. Today, we believe the redemptive qualities of Jesus' sacrifice makes us all children of God. Makes us all children of God. And let me make a point of this. It's not because of anything we do. It's because of what Jesus did. And that's for all people. And that includes all Christians, all Jews, all Muslims. And yes, it even includes those who do not believe in God. Anything short of that only serves to cheapen the incarnation. It cheapens Jesus' suffering on the cross. It cheapens the power of his resurrection. John is not referring to himself and his congregation literally as children. After all, they're adults. He's really saying that they have been reborn into a new life in Christ. That they are young but maturing pilgrims on the way of Jesus. Early Christians called themselves and their new lives the way. We too are pilgrims of the way of Jesus. And we are all children of God, exploring our individual, unique spiritual journeys day by day. A child is loved by the parent, and so are we loved by our Creator in heaven. Children are dependent upon their parent, and so are we dependent upon our Creator for nurturing, guidance, and comfort, and all our important needs. A child is innocent, and so should we be innocent, being trusting and faithful in our God, trusting in our worship and in our lives in Christ and in God's presence in the world. But a child is also an evolving creature. A child grows and matures as the experience of life progresses. With age and experience, children of God learn what brings them closer to God and what does not, what causes separation. And even in adulthood, even in our later years, we continue to evolve. 
we continue to be works in progress. Resurrection is about new life, no matter what our ages and years, no matter where we are in our spiritual journey. The great joy of our faith is that through redemption, we are given the freedom to live a new life in Christ and in the world without failure. Easter time is a time to celebrate this freedom in eternal life. Each Sunday is a time to celebrate freedom in eternal life. We gain knowledge of our faith every day, and yet sometimes we lose our faith. But through our day-to-day -day struggles, we partake in glimpses of the eternal world, the resurrected life in eternity. Sometimes that glimpse of everlasting life takes the form of a newly budding flower or an ever-present mountain that doesn't go away. It shows in that spark in the eye of a young child about to run off to Sunday school. Perhaps it comes when witnessing a mother giving birth. Perhaps it comes even when we witness a peaceful death. Moments of grace are always fleeting. We really don't know why it is. Sometimes we feel like Icarus, flying close to the sun, close to heaven, close <coughs> to God. And sometimes we feel we are just wandering aimlessly in this wilderness of life, without purpose, and wondering, what's life all about? But if we persevere in the faith, if we continue to pursue the holy, God finds a way to bring us back, to bring us closer in the form of rebirth and renewal. God never gives up on us because after all is said and done, it is God, not us, who knows our purpose in life. Because after all is said and done, we are all children of God. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. Christ has been raised for the dead. You are the new fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>